Let's bring in a man who's right on the front lines of all this. He's a great guy. He's Republican Senator Kevin Kramer. Senator, I say that because you're a straight shooter. This sounds like common sense. Grab the headlines away from the Pelosi spats and the petty stuff going on. I mean, I know Senator Tim Kaine is calling for a Saturday session. What do you think of that right. idea, Senator? Well, it's been very difficult, Liz, and thank you, Elizabeth, by the way, for the opportunity. It's been very difficult to be somewhat on the sidelines in all of this, and in the Senate um, is not in the fight, but we have been talking to each other probably in, in very constructive ways, in more informal ways, and my sense is there is a softening. However, that said, unless Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, is willing to negotiate with Donald Trump, the President of the United States, everything we do is sort of window dressing. That's not to say we shouldn't be doing it, um, but those two have to come to some resolution or we're, we're not in a, a position to move things forward. Now, Understood. I am encouraged to hear that some House Democrats are waving. We've got to get this to the rank and file members apart from the leadership. Yeah, that's a great point you made. So maybe the president tomorrow does declare a national emergency or says, I'm going to take funds out of the disaster relief uh, uh, funds that we already have. We don't know what the president will announce tomorrow, sir. What are you expecting? Yeah, it's a good, good point, because I didn't know anything about it until I just heard it in my ear as you guys were talking about it. Uh, he's been reluctant to declare a national emergency, and I think somewhat because while he might make a point in that, and, and certainly he could take the political monkey off of his back, and of course it would also relieve Democrats from their tensions, but it doesn't get a wall built. And I'm pretty sure he's more committed to getting a wall built than he is to scoring political points. So I don't know what his announcement is going to be, uh, but I am looking forward to it, obviously, and I'm going to try to find out everything I can when this show's done. Okay, let's do a reality check. We've had a government shutdown practically every other year since the 70s. So we take it mm. with a grain of salt. I'm wondering if you do too, sir, when Democrats like Dick Durbin fear monger that President Trump will use future shutdowns with abandon when we've had one every other year. Well, it's a good point. It's become far too common. This one, I think, this one's different in that it's it's 25 percent of the government. It's not the entire government, and I think that's part of why it's been able to linger as long without providing the kind of pressure, political pressure. I'd also add this: this administration has done everything it can, even through a touch uh, a shutdown, to deliver services, including opening some of the USDA offices, for example, a few days at a time, making you know, promises and passing legislation, signing laws that guarantee back pay. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to ease the pain as much as they can, even through the, the shutdown. And in some respects, I think that's relieved some of the pressure that's existed in previous years. Now, yeah. you know, I personally would like to see some way where you could take this off the table as a tool but at the same time it is the job of the congress and the and the executive branch every year to to fund the government and we shouldn't be shirking our responsibilities yeah, by institutionalizing I mean, ongoing crs yeah that's a yeah because that's basically the only test I mean, one of the only biggest tests that the congress says what's your take on this nasty fi right. nasty fight what's your take on the fight between trump and pelosi well, I've never seen anything like it. You know, I think of those years when I was in the House with whether it was Speaker Boehner or, or Speaker Ryan and uh, Barack Obama. It's not like they, they had a great, um, you know, uh, a great relationship necessarily, but they did talk on a pretty regular basis. They never uh, made the types of claims about yeah. each other that, that's happening now. But for, for Nancy Pelosi to throw out this crazy assertion that Donald Trump put her in danger by leaking her travel plans when now we find out from the State Department that what really happened was the State Department out of Kabul, you know, suggested that they cancel because um, information had leaked as a result of buying tickets or reserving airline tickets on an unsecure server or through uh, unclassified means put them in danger. By her it's, team, it's, by her delegation, that they were by buying By her the team, tickets. exactly, yeah. Yeah. precisely. I mean, because precisely. we have her spokesman putting out a statement that, you know, there was this, uh, that supported Nancy Pelosi's claim. Let's just show it on the screen. Uh, you know, we're watching this fight unfold. There's got to be a way mm -hmm. to get Pelosi to budge. What do you think? Well, here's what's interesting to me is why doesn't she offer the president something that her and her team really, really want? To me, she looks like she's inept at negotiating because she's more bent on him losing than she is on winning things for her own party. This is what a divided government does. The divided right. government ought to be able to find ways to have winners and winners, not losers and losers. That's a great point. I, I'm, I'm amazed at, at her ineptness in this negotiation. Senator, great to see you. Come back soon. I look forward to it. Thank you. Okay.